but it was still something that had some unexpected mechanics in it. With that said, I had a blast watching Wolf Child, and I think I'm going to have a blast with this next game. Let's go ahead and welcome on in our next GM. Uh-oh, Jeff. Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Are you there? It's me. You hear me? Uh, a, a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I can adjust that. Okay, turning you up. Hello, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. Okay. Oh, you're beautiful. Yeah. Why, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> so, Jeff, uh, I think people are a little bit scared just seeing your name. Uh, so, yeah. You know, in the last uh, Cuso Grande, I had all of these really great uh, European food based DOS mascot platformers. Yes, uh, a and, lot of yogurt uh, games. We had, we had yogurt, we had a couple of other, I think we had peanuts. Uh, so, I'm back to that because uh, I know everybody missed it so much. Oh, I missed it. Uh, so, today we have an Italian candy game. Oh, I'm sorry. Just saying an Italian candy game is already killing me. Okay, what, what's the, the game called? Italian is modifying game, not candy. I mean, they, they sell the candy in, in Italy, but it is uh, a British-made candy. Okay. So, for whatever reason, they made this game in Italian, and that's it. Okay. And it's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's pretty obscure. I, I don't think anybody will have heard of it. I it's haven't. Called Mr. Fruit Joy. Mr. Fruit Joy, this thing. Why does it have eyes? And it looks like it's multiple sections of the candy, but it has eyes for some reason. I don't know. Well, it's a mascot. It's a mascot, so it has to have eyes and hands well, and stuff. That's a crappy mascot. Doesn't well, make it, sense. It, what it happens if you break pretty. him in half? Don't do that. <laughs> If you break him in half, he dies. Well, okay. I, I suppose that's a good reason not to break uh, Mr. Fruit Joy in half. <laughs> I, I expect that you'll see, but it's also like, he's not going to break in half. He's going to break into like every little piece. And so you might see a little bit of that happening. Like those candies aren't glued together. I mean, they're kind of sticky though. Don't they, do they, do they stay together at all? In, in that yeah, case, I mean, are the, the arms too. are the arms just attached to the like red piece then? So if all the other yeah. pieces fell off, it, he'd just be eyeballs and arms. The the eyeballs uh, I I think aren't really attached to anything. I think there's like an invisible membrane Ugh. that supports the eyes. Oh my gosh, I don't like this thing. I mean, you're not supposed to like it. You're just supposed to eat it. I'm not going to. <laughs> so this is actually, I, I don't know why it's done like this, but this candy is called Fruit Joy in Italy and Canada. Fruit Joy. Um, the rest of the world knows it as Round Trees Fruit Pastels. Fruit Pastels? Pastels. P-A-S-T-I-L-L-E-S. Oh. Pastels. Okay, I guess. Um... Does he die or split into he he when he dies he splits into all the candies go all over the place. Don't worry, you will see death soon enough. I was gonna say that's the way I like him dead. <laughs> and, yeah, there's a question about what fruits they are. So from top to bottom, uh, it is black currant, orange, Ooh. strawberry, lime, and blue. Strawberry, lime. For whatever blue. reason, they they chose blue, even though there is no blue candy. Uh, that the company makes. Well, they make it now. No, they don't. What what flavor? Oh, well, they made it then. They never made it. There's never been a blue flavor. <laughs> are you are the you devs sure? Just decide. You could you could all right. First of all, uh, what what candy flavors do you generally see as? blue and uh second, usually go. it's like mystery flavor all right well it's blue flavor well 
Oh, okay. But it, it's not even blue flavor because it doesn't exist and you can't eat it. So just, just, it, it's blue, it's blue, um, poison. light waves. Poison flavor. Blue light, blue light ooh, waves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I know. It's almond flavored. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We figured it out. Could be a blue cheese. Yeah, I, I agree with chat. Blue cheese sounds about right. Sure. I mean, it's an Italian uh, made game. <laughs> I mean, do they do they make blue cheese candy over in Italy? I, they probably do. I don't know. I'm not uh, an Italy candy expert. I'm only an uh, Italy game candy expert. Oh, okay. Like you're the you're the candy video game expert that every stream needs. <laughs> every stream needs it, but every stream has it. Ah, oh, crap! Because I know Portuguese, I can actually read the text here. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's in Italian, but it's very similar to Portuguese. What can you say? As soon as you know one Latin-based language, you know them all. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, actually, I, actually, I hear you. Jeff, do you speak other languages? No. I feel I like mean, you should. I took a lot of years of French, but I can't speak it. <laughs> you can read it, though, right? I can read it. Okay, that's acceptable, then. I'll go ahead and accept that. Actually, it's one of those things like taking yeah. it in school like i wasn't immersed in it we had reading assignments and so i did that and i learned reading so it's, it's helpful for crosswords because i never actually need to speak with anybody or uh, pronounce nice. the words or know the grammar i just kind of get the nouns and the verbs and figure it out from there i like it yeah i i wonder chat what languages do you all speak uh because i i love various languages i need to learn more I, I i wish that i could learn more we've got some german speakers we've got sarcasm that's a language i suppose i've been watching a streamer recently uh who is learning german by playing super mario odyssey in german Ooh. and they're all the like travel brochures and stuff that you can read um there's a lot of really interesting text and apparently it's a lot more fun than german classes who would have guessed Mario Odyssey is better than school? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we have a lot of just, uh, a lot of multilingual folks here, and um, yeah, that's awesome. Spanish, yeah. Hebrew, English. Like, if if I were still religious, if I were still, uh, if I if I still considered myself Christian, I would totally be down for learning. Uh, Hebrew, but I'm not, and it's not relevant to my current interests in my life. So, uh, uh, otherwise, that would be a, a fantastic one for me to learn. Yeah, then you'd understand uh, what's going on in all the Hebrew, in, in all the Israeli uh, games that I picked that are in Hebrew. Oh my gosh! If only Jeff. If only I could understand those. <laughs> I don't know that you want to understand them or that knowing Hebrew will actually help you understand the game, but at least help you understand the text. In general, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm just getting the last few details wrapped up so that we can make the transition over sure. to the players here. We have uh, some questions about what kind of candy Mr. Fruit Joy is. He's a, he's a squishy candy. He's made of gelatin. Um, and he's coated with sugar. Gelatin and coated a, with sugar. Okay. Yeah, so think like uh, like a gum, only flat. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think. Uh, we're multicultural around here. Uh, and if if it's fine, is is that considered kosher, Jeff? This kind of candy. Is that an okay uh, question for me to ask? You you said it has I, I, gelatin. I, I, I don't know what gelatin does, is though, or if gelatin it's okay. is uh, made with uh, fish parts with among other things. Fish. Yeah, it's Gross. fish. Like, yeah. I mean, there's nothing inherently uh, uh, trafe about fish. Just shellfish. 
Yeah, okay. So, that's cool. But it's definitely not vegan. Oh, that's right. You're vegan, too. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, this candy actually... I, I don't know what else is in it. The uh, Their like, big selling point is it's, it's real fruit juice in it instead of artificial colors Ooh. and flavors. You know... Uh, I'm I'm not sure if I buy that as necessarily being better or worse. Uh, they say it's real fruit juice. Guess what? It probably has the same nutritional value. Uh, yeah, and it probably has more calories uh, because of the fruit juice instead of the artificial flavors. But whatever, you're not eating Mr. Fruit Joy for your health. <laughs> you know. You don't tell me what to do, Mom. <laughs> But I mean, that was their their marketing campaign. Was a lot of it was to parents um, about the, uh, the the real fruit juice. So, um, so but, it so was all candy, propaganda. That's what you're saying. Well, yeah, yeah, and it worked. Uh, apparently, Can it's a candy propaganda. Successful English brand. Apparently, uh, they first made it in 1881. Ooh, are you it's been serious? Been for a while. That's really yeah, cool. It's, it's called Round Trees in the rest of the world. <laughs> Except in Italy, and um, it is called Fruit Joy. Fruit Joy. <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> one quick check just to make sure I have everybody in the right place. It's easier for me to do it. Live. Anybody here is from Canada or Asia, they were called Fruit Tips. They come in like a Are they tube. just okay, everybody? It looks like the players are ready, and I want to go ahead and let you know spam everything that is as sweet as you can find. Spam those emotes because we are doing the countdown in Discord. Bubsy is not sweet. Wow, I'm kind of offended. Ah, uh, someone spam me. Aw, that is perfect. Yeah. Sugar. See, that's about as sweet as you can get. Uh, there are actually substances that are sweeter than sugar. Lies. Um, most of the artificial ones. Okay, uh, here we go. Hey, it looks like Bendy Human does not have any blue. So, no lies there. It's just... Yeah, so you start out with a couple of blank ones, and your goal is to collect uh, three candies on each level. Um, strawberry, uh, black currant, and blue. I am going to refresh Daydream Glitterbug. There we go. Very nice. Everybody is off to a quick start. Yes. So uh, I guess a few things about this. Um, you have an energy bar at the bottom left. Um, it looks like the kind of game where you'd get hit by something and it would kill you. But there's, you know, it doesn't really look like anything's happening when you get hit, except it drains your energy in the bottom left. So that's what you need to focus on. Okay. Uh, hit boxes are real, are real wonky. Um, and one of the hardest things I found about this game was not knowing what's background and what you can jump on. So I guess you could call that a feature. I mean, I guess that's kind of part of what they were trying to get you to figure out, but um, it doesn't, it did not, uh, it did not please me. This is weird. Okay, what what did you say that the candy was called in English? Uh, round tree, R-O-W-N-T-R-E-E. -E. Okay, round trees. Okay, so apparently they developed the Kit Kat, uh, the the confectionery shop Round Trees developed Kit Kat, Arrow Fruit Pastilles, Smarties, and the Rolo and Quality Street brands. So th this is essentially proto Smarties. That's what I'd say. Well, but they're not hard. They're squishy. Yeah, they're more like I mean, there are some squishy Smarties. Really? I've only seen the, I like, don't the ones I... that are like pills. <laughs> the pill Smarties. Mm. 
Yeah, uh, doctor. I'm gonna go ahead and give you Smarties to cure whatever is, you know, in going wrong with you. Always good. Oh, the the Smarties in the U.S. might be different. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, so from what I can see, uh, there were they had a little bit of sugar sprinkled on each one. These are definitely a lot smoother than they looked uh, back when they were made. Oh no, they look much more appetizing in the pictures that I'm seeing. Uh, well, good. Um, you can try them someday. I don't know if they're in the U.S., but uh, next time you are, uh, oh, you can probably get them. Uh, you can probably get them online. I bet you can buy them on eBay. I mean, maybe. Uh, Pretty Pink Pansy exploded, and this nerd ate him. No. Yeah. Yeah, the nerd ate him. So, so Ben to Hume onto a bonus stage already, and you have to play the bonus stage. You can't, you can't just die and get out of it. Well, that's nice. Um, but so we're gonna see uh, round two, <laughs> or level two. These faces are too good, right? Oh, they're so good. So the the enemies are based on advertisements that the company put. Uh, and one of them is a uh, basketball player who looks like a Harlem. I, I don't know if it actually is or not. Yeah, it does. Uh, and uh, uh, the there's a there's a little kid who gives him a, a candy, and they're they're like their uh, catchphrase or whatever is uh, like "bet you can't chew," it. "I bet you can't not chew it," or something like that. You have to chew it. Um, and so they're, all of their commercials are like, you put it in your mouth, and then like you get a reward if you don't chew it. But nobody can not chew it. Uh, so I, I don't know why that's a thing. Ah, leveo completado. Actually, how do you do double L in Italian? Is it just... Livello completado. Yeah, there we go. I, I'm going to say that that was close enough. Yeah, sure. I, I know what it means. It means level complete. Big surprise there. <laughs> uh, well, you can get it from context. So these enemies have names. Okay. Um, the, the basketball player is called Golas Pivot. <laughs> and the skater is called Ingrid Skate. Ingrid Skate? Yep. Or Ingord, I N G O R D. Oh, Ingord. I was gonna say Ingrid sounds like a more of a female name, but he's very much stereotypically uh, sort of a punk skater running around there. Yeah. So, what I'm seeing right now with this game is that one of the most frustrating things is the jump, specifically trying to jump yeah. up onto certain places. Like everybody keeps missing platforms. Why why is the jump so difficult? All right. So the first thing is you you don't really know what you can jump on and what you can't. The okay. second thing is that um, the way the controls work, um, it's really hard to control how far you're jumping um, because you basic and they might not have figured this out yet. But um, if you hold up and right, for example, it will treat it as if you've hit uh, uh, up once. So that only takes you like the minimum distance. If you uh, hold right and like repeatedly hit up, it'll take you the long distance. But even then, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what it's going to do. Um, so you just need to get sort of in the rough area. The platforming doesn't need to be that precise. But given that you have absolutely no idea how far you're going to be jumping, like half the screen or just a few inches, uh, <laughs> it's really hard to, to know what to do. Uh, you also, you can't you can't change while you're in the air. It's, uh, you know, that, that Castlevania kind of thing going on. Um, um, so you, you, just, you just don't know what you're gonna get. It's like yeah. a box of chocolates. 
There you go. Yeah, honestly, what, one thing that I'm noticing as well is that the platforms look bigger than they actually are. Uh, it's very similar to Wizard of Oz for Super Nintendo. If you get to the edge of the platform, uh, yeah, Daydream Glitterbug trying to jump right there. You see uh, uh, they are not able to land on top of it. Why? Because the platform is dumb. It's got a terrible hitbox. Uh, and so some of these platforms are also really deceptive because you see, um, you know, on the on the top left on Bendy Human's screen, there's like two pillars on the right and like one slightly taller than the other. You actually yeah. need a like jump to get it. Like it looks like you should just be able to walk, uh, but you can't. Oh, and, and you can't just walk across to the skateboarder either. Right, right. The skateboarder somehow blocks your progress, so this is weird. you can't jump into him. Uh, <laughs> And um, I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on, but like sometimes when there's a platform above you, it, it prevents you from uh, jumping and sometimes it doesn't. So I don't really know what's going on with that. The little um, dolls or puppets or whatever with the, with the flexing guy, that restores your energy. It is not a one-up as you might think. The only way to get extra lives is through score 10,000 Punties will get you another life. Uh, well, honestly, everybody is making some pretty solid progress. Uh, we've got... Yes. Although these levels are really ugly, and yeah, the, the difficulty with this type of perspective, this type of game, is that it's very difficult to really see where you can walk. It suffers from the same Bill and Ted DOS type of thing. Yes. Now, it's... It's possible we're going to see some completions of this game. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up too much, but there are only four levels. Uh, there is the, the first level, which is New York. The second one is Rome. And after that, Paris and London. Um, the problem is you only have three lives throughout the whole game. And, uh, you know, maybe you'll, if you do well on the bonus level, you'll get 10,000 points and get one extra life. But... Um, it's it's pretty tough, and also this is one of the games where the timer matters. Um, until you get familiar with the levels and know where the candies are, uh, it's uh, gonna be gonna be tough. And even then, just the platforming is so bad. Um, <laughs> you're just gonna miss. It's so gonna... bad. Yeah, like see, this is one of these games. It would be a cute, fun game if it wasn't for the for the controls right and the hit you know the hitboxes and controls but like other than that it's cute it has good music it's a little short but yeah powerful. it's it's not too bad from what i'm seeing like it's, it's playable it's just you have to get used to the really really bad platforming and if, yes. if you do that and you, you should be able to make some progress here i i don't think though that this would have helped sell much candy back in the day gotta be honest well it's one of these things where it's backwards like if you buy well so you don't you don't know what you're you're getting you had to buy a whole bunch of the candy in order to get this game uh sent to you and so i guess they've already sold it <laughs> sold the candy by the time you're getting the game um and you know all you know about it uh when you see it see the ads is you get this really cool game buy our candy yay candy yay candy so i actually found online somebody saved the letter that they got when they received the game uh, and it says congratulations you have won the legendary video game mr fruit joy which you cannot resist here is the floppy disk Ooh. truth be told you can't be you can't wait to play with mr fruit joy so read the instructions carefully and start chewing the irresistible adventures of mr fruit joy that's Google Translate, so I don't know exactly oh, how good baby. that is. But the instructions don't really tell you much. Fruit baskets increase the score. Fruit Joy puppets raise your energy. Take a look at the time and try to collect as many points as possible. At the completion, you'll be given additional bonus points in relation to the time it took to find all three candies. And then there are bonus levels in which you will have to collect all the fruit. Oh, yeah. So that's all as far as instructions. Um, I mean, the, the keys are, are pretty simple. There are only three of them, left, right, and up. 
There's no ducking and up is jump because of course it is. Oh, up to jump. Why not? Uh, does that mean up left or up right? That's going to be a yes. diagonal jump. Yes. I imagine that could be a little bit of a nightmare trying to figure out how to make that reliable, the diagonal jump. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm saying. Like, it's really hard to get used to because um, in addition to just hitting like up and right at the same time, if you want to go a different distance, you have to let go of off and press it again. Jump, jump. Moulin Rouge. Yeah, it's, uh, we're in Paris now. So Ben Human's doing real well, but only... Oh my gosh, Ben Human's doing really well. Uh, one life, maybe to get another one soon. If people have one really strong attempt, they should be able to beat the game. Um, it, it's just, it's a little hard to calibrate uh, to figure out how people are going to do on this because oh, um, yeah. uh, it's short. I couldn't beat it in an hour. Um, I, it, I couldn't beat it in an hour, but it's pretty short. Uh, but it's just how well you get to learn the controls. So I could see somebody, you know, really struggling this the whole time or somebody uh, uh, finishing it straight away. Yeah, honestly, you know. We don't always know if there's going to be a completion here. Uh, th this group, by the way, they're, from what I understand, they are the two-point group, which means that only one person is going to be moving forward, uh, whoever takes first. So, you know, they, they struggled during the last match. Hopefully, uh, some of the players here are able to find a little bit more enjoyment in this one. Yeah, I, I thought it would be uh, cha -cha, a fun... Cha -cha, cha -cha. Other than the controls, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's a big other than. <laughs> but um, I kind of enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. So I thought I'd go a little, go a little easier on them. Because for three of them, this is going to be the last uh, game they play in Cuso Grande. In this Cuso Grande. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This is the last game. Just imagine, you're stuck on a deserted island. You're starving. But up washes something on the shore. A computer with this game installed on it. Do you play it until you die? Yes or no? <laughs> I mean, I guess you don't have a lot of choices. Um, I so probably would. Human is could be on pace to finish this soon, but one life. And uh, if they die, then it's start all over from the beginning of the game. <laughs> Amazing. So they give you that uh, energy refill right at the beginning of the level where it's useless. <laughs> uh, they take it anyway. Um, and but the the time is really rough in this. But it looks like just one more uh, just one more fruit for Bendy Human. Very nice. Yeah, Bendy is doing pretty well. Is this New York that I'm seeing? Uh, New York is the first level. Oh, okay. Is this the third one? This is uh, London, uh, which is the last level. We could actually see a completion in you know, 15 minutes into this match, um, or Bendy Human could be starting completely from scratch in a moment. Yeah, Escorian oh, moving oh. on. Oh, oh no. So and, uh, one, it seems like one life left. It's a little bit inconsistent when you're going to take damage. Like, I've seen people walk past the various characters on the screen and not get hurt, but occasionally they do. Like, I don't understand. The hitboxes are pretty, are pretty wonky. Um, but uh, if you, if you follow the, uh, the energy bars on the bottom left, you can see um, sometimes they're, they're taking a huge amount of damage and sometimes it's just a tiny bit. So I don't know exactly how that works, but 
Um, you can certainly jump through the animals with no problem. So unfortunately, Bendy Human uh, died, <laughs> which is no. what I was kind of expecting. Well, yeah, it Game happens. Over. It was kind of what I was expecting uh, would happen with this, is people would uh, make it fairly far and then just have to restart from the beginning. But it only takes one, uh, one strong push to make it to the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, livello completato. Oh, my gosh. I'm enjoying uh, at least the music here. I don't think this music is right for a video game. <laughs> yeah, it's nice music. I don't... I don't know what it has to do with the game, but... So let me tell you a little bit about the company that made um, it. Is, uh, it is Italy's, uh, well, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was Italy's first uh, software uh, publishing. Uh, and it was called Simulmondo, S-I-M-U-L-M-O-N. And they started um, in the 80s. Uh, and they had uh, quite a few games starting uh, with the Commodore 60. Um, yeah. Uh, then they started making Amiga games. Then uh, they moved on to PC. And then there was this interesting trend. I, I don't know how much really happened here in the U.S., but um, games were sold at newsstands which was uh, like how that one Brazilian uh, game that I, I gave out um, with the Red Planet uh, was distributed. Um, and then eventually they started making uh, football soccer games, uh, then magazines, educational games, and finally, this was uh, the end of their life, uh, they made Fruit Joy <laughs> for Nestle. And then uh, things didn't go so well for them and they disbanded. And this game apparently wasn't even a big enough hit to land on the company's Wikipedia page, which lists all of their other games, except for this one. Yeah, I, I took a look at the company here. Honestly, what it looks like is that uh, the, the games that were most common for this company, let's see, the, the, the company has made... Si is called Simul Mondo. They're an Italian software house from Bologna. <laughs> from Bologna. <laughs> I'm gonna say it Bologna. Okay, I'm an American. Right. That's how we say it. They're from Bologna. Uh, they made Dylan Dog games, which uh, yes. I, I suppose I don't really know what Dylan Dog is, but they made a few of them. So Dylan Dog's a pretty pretty kuso title. Um, okay. I'm not gonna lie, but it's based on a comic. So apparently a, a popular comic, but um, the uh, the Dylan Dog uh, games are not not the highest quality. <laughs> Honestly, uh, you know, I, I I take a look at those games and they don't really look appealing to me at all. I mean, they look appealing to me as far as a game to give out a Kuso, but. <laughs> But that's about it. Uh, oh, but yeah, Dylan Dog's not really my kind of game. Lots of lots of shooting. I like my my deaths to be without shooting. I I prefer people just being hacked up into tiny bits, like the natural way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like getting old. No, um, being eaten by a skater. Oh, I, well, I don't like dying that way. <laughs> Almost happened once. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. I, uh, uh, honestly, you, you gotta watch out for cannibals, okay? They're everywhere. There might be a cannibal behind you. There could be. Yeah, they drain your energy and then eat your head. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I feel like that doesn't count as cannibalism if you're Candy and they're a skateboarder. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So the uh, lesson is don't be Candy. Don't be Candy. That's a very good lesson. Oh my gosh. I'm getting tired of this music, Jeff. This is like something that should be in some kid's movie that essentially, you know, is that one scene where they have an awkward conversation. Or it could be an anime. Awkward conversation, anime music. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Um, it's nice music. It would have been nice if they did more of it. But, you know, they didn't put that much effort into this. They made four levels. Um, and uh, look, everybody's getting high scores. Good for them. Oh, uh, yeah. Which messes up the scoreboard because now the one that says first is second. The one that says second is in third place, etc. Uh, so there we go. Do, do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we're 23 minutes into this. Honestly, the game is still anybody's. You know, we've seen some significant progress by the players. Uh, but honestly, I feel like it's going to come down to who is able to beat it first. Yeah, I think so. Oh, wait. Um, did Escorium beat the game? Uh, not that I saw. I saw a game over with a high score. Oh, Escorian did? That was not a game over. Okay. I saw the high score screen. It, like, it doesn't have a boss battle or anything, so there's n there's no, like, oh, you know that they're just about to win. You just gotta notice when they get all free. <laughs> you just gotta slightly pay attention. Pay yeah, attention. Uh, I absolutely didn't notice, but Escoria did beat the game. Uh... Yeah, welcome to games in the 90s, especially games that are shovelware for candy. Let, let's just go ahead and say that ending screens are optional. Yeah. Uh, I'm making yeah. Escorian <laughs> yeah, right. play again so that we have music. But yeah, Escorian <laughs> definitely took the victory. Jeff, I seem like I'm completely off today. <laughs> Because, you know, the last game, we're like, well, uh, we think we think somebody won. This one, it's like we didn't even realize somebody beat the game. Well, to be fair, I mean, if, unless you're paying pretty close attention, it's not like there's uh, anything that tells you. But yeah, I, I, I figured this might happen. Um, some people might struggle with it. Some people might beat it really fast. Yeah, the, the biggest question is how quick can you adapt to odd platforming? And for this yeah. game, yeah, definitely Escorian managed to figure out uh, the awkward platforming and especially the jump distance in order to get on the platforms. If you can figure that out, then you've got a good chance. Oh no, pretty pink pansy into the pit. Unfortunately, Greece is not impressed. <laughs> Exclamation point. S. What does that mean? Why is there an S? Uh, I, I don't know what the S is. The exclamation point is... Oh my god, you're dead. <laughs> uh, I, I love some of the stuff that I'm seeing in the chat, by the way. Daydream is saying, nails the jump, then proceeds to run into the dude. Yeah, the, how, how does momentum work? Like, do you there keep isn't... moving after you no. jump? No. Just stop. I mean, let's, if you have the button held down, but now, there yeah, is no momentum. One of the really annoying things about this game, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and say this, uh, is that the energy level at the bottom left is green slash brown, yellow. orange, yeah. yellow. Uh, and let's just say with my colorblindness, I didn't actually realize that was changing for the players for a while. I, I can see it now if I'm looking specifically at it. Uh, but yeah, those are not very friendly colors. 
for the color. They're not friendly colors, and there's no indication you're being hit. Like there's no like sound. There's no iframe. There's no sound. There's no like animation. You just have to pay attention to what's going on in the bottom left. When I first started playing this, I didn't notice what was going on. I was like, "Hey, am I like invincible? Because these enemies are just walking right through me." And I didn't notice. Oh, my health's almost to the end. <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, other people who aren't colorblind didn't notice. Oh, good, I'm not alone. I'm... Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I did, I didn't notice for a long time. Yeah, uh -huh. so absolutely, that's flawed, is what I'd say. One odd thing about it as well is that the energy, the word for energy, is above your lives, not above the energy. Yeah, they put it, I guess, to the right of your energy. <laughs> that's kind of dumb. <laughs> Why would you do yeah. that? Yeah. Why would you do that? Because I didn't have space to put it above. So it looks like Bendy Human is onto the last level, London. Um, but again, only uh, one life. And only half their health bar left. Let's see. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to find out more about this candy because it, it's kind of fascinating to me. It started back in the 1800s over in the UK, uh, less united than it currently is, I would assume. Uh, yeah, they started essentially in the Victorian era. Uh, the guy who founded it was a Quaker, Henry Isaac Roundtree. Uh, he founded the company and apparently bought out some other family at that time. Uh, at that time, he acquired a foundry for a thousand pounds, moved production there, 12 people making the candy there. Uh, but unfortunately... Uh, he had financial difficulties, so he merged with his brother's company. Uh, the the fruit later came out in 1881, the, the mascot that we see here, essentially. Except less of a mascot, more of just candy. I'd be really creepy if somebody came up with this mascot in the 1800s. I think so, too. But also, um, this... This mascot is not like an actual mascot for the company, right? This is just for this game. For, there is no Mr. Fruit Joy outside of this game, and it's only Mr. Fruit Joy in Italy. <laughs> I mean, it's only like Fruit Joy in Italy. So. One thing, though, um, since uh, Escorian is, is playing it again, there is currently no playthrough on YouTube of this game. So I'm hoping that. Um, if there's a good playthrough, uh, somebody will be willing to put that up. Oh yeah. This, this, this game, you know, it's it's obscure and um, not the best game, but it, it deserves uh, it deserves a good playthrough and, and for people to be able to see it. By the way, I'm taking a look. You said that it uses fruit juice, not uh, other flavors. That was their marketing campaign. Their marketing campaign was that it's 25% fruit juice. It's not even, yeah. like, 100%. Well, yeah, clearly part of it is gelatin. But well, <laughs> why not just say real fruit juice and, you know, so not have, have the finishes. percent? That's weird. Bendy has completed the game. We have two players who have, uh, who have gotten through it. So we have half an hour left, and I think there's a, there's a chance uh, everybody will end up. I think we might see yet. everybody beat this game. Look! Okay, Red Queen Anya, I understand that if it was 100% fruit juice, it would just be juice. I want juice. <laughs> Is that a problem? So there was apparently a commercial in the 1980s uh, featuring a child daring a basketball player to not chew on the pastille. Yeah. The slogan from the previous ad was still used. Uh, you can't help but chew. So is this a spin off of that commercial? Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, the like Harlem Globetrotter in the commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, okay. That's uh, what the basketball player is. 
Um, I, I don't know where the skater kid comes from. Um, he might be the one daring the basketball player to not chew. No, on the no, candy. it's a little. It's like it's, a like a like a. A top, not a toddler, but like like a seven year old. I don't know. I don't know. It's a commercial. It, it, there's a there's an English one and there's an Italian one. Let, let me go. I'm going to go to YouTube and try to not accidentally uh, play the music or play the and sound from the, the advertisement here. The other really awful one is like uh, this guy puts the candy in his mouth and then um, uh, a carriage comes by with like a princess in it. And he's told that if he doesn't chew, he can get the princess. And uh, he seems really into the princess, but he chews and she gets mad and leaves. I don't know how that works. Like somebody out there was like, "Gee, I'd be really into a dude if he couldn't chew this, uh, that, or if he if he didn't chew it, and I'd I'd marry him on the spot if he did that." Um, but alas, um, this it's random about dude... self control, Jeff. And simply yeah. put, he didn't have enough self control to stay away from the fruit pastille. I guess that might be the a person's sole qualification for getting married to someone, but uh, <laughs> standards have changed over the last few decades. <laughs> okay, so I I am seeing uh, some sort of kid with a hat on sideways with a bunch of pins on it. He's probably the rebel here, except that's for yeah. a different candy bar. Dang it. Oh man, pretty big pansies drawing uh, Bubzat. Bubzat, a sad Bubzat. Oh this no, not, this is about as <laughs> it's about as nice as I can get. <laughs> <laughs> this Still game is about sad. as nice as you can get. Wow, Jeff. Yes, the it standards, is. the standards of this world. I mean, this is. Not a competent platformer, but it's pretty. So it's pretty something. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say about the game uh, control is that there's a delay between uh, when you hit a button and when you turn around. It's like about a quarter second. Uh, that's really annoying. I mean, it doesn't make the platforming any harder. Um, but it, it certainly diminishes the fun of the game. Do do do, ba da ba da ba, ba ba da da, da 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 da. Ah, you know what? At least the levels have some pretty good graphics. I enjoy the cartoony style of the different areas here like uh, obviously it wasn't just uh individual uh individual sprites you know they put together a whole world i'm going to give the artists who work on this uh props for making this look pretty good yeah i mean they also didn't really have a lot to work with as far as assets from nestle right yeah I mean, what do you have no you got some joy. discs of gelatin you got a basketball player and a and a kid with a backwards hat or a sideways cap. Uh, that's pretty much all you have. So they did a pretty good job on the graphics. Oh yeah. Thing. The problem is just like a lot of games of this era when they went the cartoony route just didn't bother with hitboxes anymore. <laughs> and you just can't tell what's going on. You're you're completely right, yeah. Uh, simply put the look can't be better than the gameplay unless you're uh, just trying to appeal to your bosses. <laughs> See, if, yeah. if management is happy, then you're happy. Uh, so I, I would assume that management saw this and they're like, this actually looks pretty fun. Uh, and they were fooled. They were also absolute fools. That like the purpose of this game was not to sell games, right? It was to sell candy. And it's true. A lot of the movies, that's why there are so many games like this. Like, this was a game that was given away for free. Like, nobody had to 
pay for them. I mean, I guess you could you could pay for it by buying candies, but I assume that the, the kids were buying a lot of candy, and so they're like, "Wow, I, I've almost got enough for the game. I better eat." You know, I'm got to choose between this and you know Smarties. I'm, I'm going to get Fruit Joy. Oh, I absolutely would have done that as a kid, unless I hated Fruit Joy. Uh, I yeah, I totally would have done that. Honestly, it's getting a free video it. game. Yeah, freaking awesome. Okay. Yeah. Let me just tell you. But most of the games that came for free were not even worth putting into the computer. You know, it's just. You know, do you want to play this broken piece of crap uh, that, that's been made in order to try to sell more candy? I usually didn't. I usually did nothing with the CDs except break them in half, you know? CDs? What are you talking about CDs? Come on. Did this have floppy? Look, this was 95. They had CDs by then. I mean, they had CDs, but there's no reason. Why would you put this game on a CD? Just... just it's cool and cds are cheap this game is 1.3 megabytes large because they only had one song <laughs> so wait are you saying it required two floppy disks then no 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 what a one uh 1.44 megabyte floppy it came on the oh the three and a half inch ones it's 1.44 yeah you're right this would have fit on a floppy dang it Oh, I love Pink Pansy putting a bounty on this game for author blues. Wait, Pink Pansy is putting an... Did you, see... oh. Did you just see what, uh, what you wrote on the screen? Well, uh, <laughs> Mr. Author Blues, if you are in... Yeah, he's in chat. Okay. <laughs> you want $50? <laughs> wow. This game, needs a... this game needs a speed run, though. Right? I mean, like... No, it if you if you yeah, it does it has it has no love it's well, not duh. a very long game you can speed run it and you know it's already it's now already been speed run in about 12 minutes and um all you got to do is just sort of pay attention to where you're jumping from yeah I, like all you would have to do is plan out literally every jump in the game and yeah uh yeah where to walk where to jump and you're done yeah, there's surprisingly a good amount of optimization that you could do for a speedrun for this game. Uh, I'm not saying it's enjoyable optimization, but yeah, it would be doable to map out exactly where you want to jump. And who knows, there may be some sneaky little glitches in this game. You never know. I mean, it is a game about fruit gummies, essentially. Yeah, that's what this is. These are just old school fruit gummies, okay? Yep, exactly. Yeah. You know what? If you would have said that, Jeff, then I would have been all over this candy. But no, I'm making fun of it. Also, why does he only have one eye? He only has one eye. I mean, in these levels, look, he only has one eye. He's a cyclops. No, there's two eyes. You're no, there's... from the side. Like... When, when he turns around, you can see both eyes. Uh, I disagree. I think that's just motion blur. <laughs> There's no blur. An attempt to motion blur. No. Like, you can clearly see the candy past the single eye, okay? Like, look at Escorian right now. There is one angry eye. I... I don't agree with you. On well, the title screen, there's two as it's well. It's fine to be wrong. Well, yeah, guess I what? Think... That was before he lost his eye. That's where they got that picture. <laughs> oh. You know, if I lost a dot, an eye, I would totally wear an eye patch and look like a pirate. I would love being a pirate. Err. Err. I would, being a pirate's got to be real cumbersome, though, because you got to get not just the eye patch, but the hook and the parrot, peg leg. I've got a hanger. I can make a hook. A parrot. Uh, I mean, we could just get a pigeon. Those are cheap. <laughs> you can't do that. Peg leg. 
whatever. Like, I could, I could just not bend my knee and wear pants. Everybody would think I have a peg leg. Do you have some of uh, Justin's crutches still around? Oh so yeah, for them. sure. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they're. But they, they're hospital crutches. They're not like the cool pirate crutches. I could well. just. Whatever. If somebody find me some driftwood that's about the right length, I'll use it. <laughs> like wrap some cloth around the edge. There, there we go. That's my crutch. Okay, so the two people we are really watching right now for everybody who's just stopping on by are Pretty Pink Pansy and Daydream Glitterbug because both Bendy Human and Escorian have already beaten the game. I think Bendy beat it a second time. So the um, yes. the person that began this uh, studio actually started uh, his interest in video games in 1972 and wrote a thesis, um, which claims to be the world's first uh, thesis on the history of video games, um, which I don't know if, uh, if, if you wrote it in like 1978, but that's quite possible. Thesis. Yeah. Um, if you wrote a thesis about video games, Jeff, what would it be? A <laughs> pretty pink pansy. I love your fan art here. <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, because pretty pink pansy and daydream glitterbug know that they don't currently have a chance of coming in first. They're taking it a little bit easier. What is this design? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, for some reason, the, the design of this character makes me think of those pizza balancing games that came out. Uh, you know, where you had to balance pizzas and not let them fall off. Uh, but you don't really have you to know, balance anything. That would be a really anything. cool mechanic for that, for this game, if you had to, like, That would have been so fun. Yourself. Well, they could have made it fun. It wouldn't by default be fun. If they were smart developers, maybe they could have made it fun. Uh, if I were to make a history of video games, I mean, I I'm really interested in uh, sort of the, the international aspects of a lot of this because... Um, Particularly in the United States and Japan, a lot of the history yeah. is well known. Um, but you know, what were what were kids in other countries playing? Uh, what were their experiences like? And a lot of these games, um, probably not this one, but some of the games I, I pick are actually uh, somewhat well known to kids that grew up in a or people who were kids during a certain time period. And People I love who the games. may have been kids <laughs> at one point or another, you know. They may have been kids, but, like, they have nostalgia goggles for things that are, that, that to us look bizarre. But if they, you know, if you had never seen, like, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers 1, you'd be like, wait, so a plumber and mushrooms makes you big? Like, what is, what on earth is all of that? I mean... I suppose, but you have to think back in the day, Pac-Man uh, was a lot stranger than Mario because all you had was an orb being chased by ghosts eating dots. Uh, but that makes you know, sense. Well, we, we started games with an abstract world. Drelms, you're... Uh, I'm trying to remember what... You, you're an eyeball flipping gates and trying to trap squares. Like, that's just sort of what they had to do with limitation. They they had to make something that you could visually understand uh, yeah, at least, least a little fine, bit. But, well, at any rate, um, when people have nostalgia goggles uh, for, for games that we do not have nostalgia goggles for, uh, and that sometimes there are cultural differences that don't make any sense uh, to us since we're both uh, generationally and also culturally 
Um, you know, I, I think it would just be uh, really fascinating. I mean, like, there are, there are people for whom Chinese bootlegs were the only things they were able to have because they grew up in China and your, your parents weren't um, part of the uh, upper echelon of the Communist Party. Yeah. Honestly, it, it, it's strange to say that bootlegs were really one of the easiest ways for people uh, over in China to experience American culture or Western culture. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Donkey Kong bootlegs. Uh, yeah, they, they just weren't able to get Donkey Kong games over there. And having those bootlegs was, you know, it, it was an inaccurate, incomplete part of our culture but still they were able to experience it and it, it's pretty awesome honestly i love looking at games that like i never would have imagined being made because this is one of those i didn't even know about the existence of this candy but now i do and i want to buy some crap the advertisement it's working <laughs> it's working jeff <laughs> I'm the target audience here. Apparently so. <laughs> jump. I think it says so jump you when like, you jump. Do you like black currants? Because the purple is not grape. It's black currant flavor. Well, I actually can't remember the flavor of currant. But I would if assume that I candy, like it. You'll find out. Well, I pretty much like all fruits. Okay, I can't think of a single one uh, that I've eaten and hated. Like, guava is pretty bland, to be fair, un unless uh, you get it made and concentrated in certain things. Guava jelly is absolutely the best thing in the world. Uh, just straight up guava, not great. I've heard of durian being terrible. I haven't tried it. Uh, maybe one of these days. I've certainly never tried it. I know it smells bad. I've never heard any descriptions of what it tastes like, though. Yeah. And you know what? You can get through the smell as long as the taste is okay. Just don't... Actually, oh, oh, oh. Ca cashew fruit. That one is weird. Uh, because for most people who didn't grow up drinking cashew juice uh, from the fruit... It just has this super strong, terrible aftertaste. What you got to do is just not breathe through your nose while you're drinking cashew juice. And if you do that, then it's pretty amazing. Not going to lie. If you don't do that, then whoa. Oh, it's wrong. Licorice isn't a fruit. It's a root, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. Um, I, I don't know if the licorice that you, you buy in a candy store is actually uh, generally made from the root or not. I don't know. You certainly can do it. Yeah. So you're going to have this uh, song stuck in your head for a while? Well, it depends on what the next game is. <laughs> <laughs> Fair like, enough. Like, honestly, this is a very common baseline. It's... I mean, you're going one, six, four, five. Uh, that's the chord progression here. No, not, not four. One six two. Yeah, I'd probably say one six two five is the progression. A little bit odd, but it, it's not too unusual. Ah. Game over for Daydream G Glitterbug crying a little bit, but uh, Daydream is saying that their fingers hurt, but they're going to keep going. Oh, my recommendation, don't hurt yourself when you play games. 
Uh, and honestly, if you need to take a minute break or so just to shake your hands out a little bit, relax a little bit, always welcome to do that, you know. Uh, we've seen people step away in order to grab a glass of water. I mean, there are some games that have made people feel motion sickness, and we don't yeah. want anybody uh, vomiting because of the tournament, you know. Take a step away. Sometimes just take a little bit of a breath. Uh, Melos is saying that they've had to step away and scream a little bit once. I love it. <laughs> You're also welcome you to, to do that. You only to break your soul, not your body. Yeah. Exactly. You've got the right idea there. So both Daydream and Pretty Pink Pansy are saying that they like this game, but also don't like it at the same time. Interesting. Uh... I'm, I'm trying to think. Honestly, the most appealing thing I would say here is the graphics and that the yeah. level layouts are actually pretty different uh, for each one that we see here. Other than that, I'm not sure there's too much redeemable value to this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so kudos to the artists. Hey, I hope that they had good jobs after this work into making all these really cool graphics and then seeing the final product and being like you did what <laughs> what did you do in my graphics what were you doing i need to have a word with you yeah exactly it's uh and they actually you know they they not only made the walk cycle for the fruit but they made the like uh the pieces moving around and the animation for for turning like there was some some effort put into it yeah i'm you know by the time this came out what in <laughs> i'm sorry i looked up uh fruit pastilles game and uh, the first thing that popped up was urban dictionary and that's definitely not what i was trying to find Okay, I'm You're gonna go ahead. You're not gonna find much on this. I'm game. not reading that definition there. Uh, yeah, Bendy has beaten the game again, possibly. I don't know. The the two on the right have definitely beaten the game. Pretty Pink Pansy and Daydream Glitterbug are just fighting for glory at this point. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you're. You're not going to find too much about this. Like, I want to know more about the people who made this. I want to know about the artist. I want to know who... Like, is there something the on the artist, title but... screen? Do they have any maybe, credits at all? The publisher. Uh, I mean, the publisher, there's an interview with the publisher, but um, who, who mentions the game is a uh, the thing that they made, but there's no real discussion of it. Yeah. Mr. Fruit Joy. It also seems really weird to me that if you were going to like commission this game to be made, you would only do you'd only do it in Italian where that's not even like your biggest market. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really understand what was going on here. Okay, L let me take a look. I actually found a little bit more information on the company. I'm trying to find... Uh, they, they mostly did Commodore 64, Amiga, and DOS, which makes sense. This is Europe. Uh, honestly, that was what they generally focused on. But apparently, they were doing some early 3D stuff. I mean, Formula 1 3D in 1991. Uh, actually, that that doesn't look too impressive, gonna be honest. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, but, yeah, they, they had people who experimented with things fairly early on that, you know, ended up being fairly interesting, not gonna lie. Dylan Dog, I really hope that I can find some of the people who did the art and find out if Anthony Icardi did the art for this because that would be amazing yeah he did dylan dog through the looking glass as well as italian night 1999 which came out in 92 
I don't know. But that, that's the problem with some of these games that, especially that were made for other companies. A lot of the times you just did not find out any information about them. You know, you, you never really got to know the individual artists or composers. Whereas for some of these other games, you know, we've seen people who have done music uh, for multiple, multiple games that came out in the US. Uh, it's just lost in time. Jeff, yeah. I'm crying. No, don't cry. Well, it's too late. Too late, There's... isn't it? I mean, you can uh, you can probably contact somebody. I mean, the, the 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 person who started the software house, I think, is still around. I have uh, an interview with them. I found. Ooh. Really? Are you serious? That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Francesco. Uh, it's on a website called Retro Gaming Planet. Retro Gaming Planet. Planet. It. It's an Italian Planet. Website. It. Okay. We're getting close to the end of the match, though. Honestly, we just have a little bit left. Escorian and Bendy Human just doing a good job of trying to get through the game one more time. You know, I, I appreciate when the players are willing to uh, just stay around and play through some of these games. So my guess, I, I'm just trying to look through some of these other games that the company made uh, to see if there's anything, any art style that is similar and it possibly could have been this guy uh massimiliano calmai uh he worked on a version of paperboy the graphics for that uh i think specifically for game boy advance uh did some of the art for a game called pray for death oh geez that that's a little bit more graphic than this game oh geez Okay, that's basically a Mortal Kombat game. Never mind, it might not have been that guy. <laughs> One day, we will find out about Mr. Fruit Joy. I hope so. Okay, hey, uh, Daydream Glitterbug, back to the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and let the remaining 20 seconds play out, everybody. This has been a match, and... Yeah, that, that's about all I can say about this game. <laughs> you jump Before around and collect candy. It's I, good stuff. I want to just uh, thank Garby for testing this game out for us. Uh, spending half an hour with this uh, just to make sure that it was uh, a good pick for us. Indeed. From what we can see, by the way, time by what we can see time. The game is over, the match is over. For sure, Escorian is the victor, clearing the game first, Bendy Human taking second. Between third and fourth, I'm personally not completely sure, and I'm not sure it really matters, but we got fan art. We got fan art of the weird Mr. Fruit Joy here. <laughs> yeah, the, the other the two day, enjoyed it. Okay, I'm gonna invite Escorian Yeah, how do you think the players did? Were you able to get through this game uh, when you were testing things out? Uh, no. Oh. Um, and I actually kind of like playing it. I but see, I suck at video games. That's why I have other people test things out. And I think um, <laughs> Garby got got through it, but uh, I don't think as fast as Escorian. Yeah, so. Escorian, welcome on in. Congratulations on the victory. Honestly, you kicked this game's butt. It was uh, it was fun. You enjoyed it? Oh, yeah. I think I might try and speedrun it if there's a record. <laughs> as far as I know, there is no record. You now you have can... the record. You have the record. <laughs> because Although nobody uh, knows of this game. You might have some competition. Uh, somebody's <laughs> proposed to play uh, pay author blues to play it. So, Hey. <laughs> yeah, so... I was going to say I hope that happens, but really, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if you speedrun it that will be awesome uh yeah 
so why did you enjoy it? What was the enjoyable stuff in this game? The controls actually were really done. Well done. Like They what? were really if, done. It, really well done. If you press, um, if you're standing still and you tap up and right, you short jump. If you take a step before you do that, you actually long jump. Uh, you can jump through your the people coming at you, so okay. you don't take any damage. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah, you can definitely... I, I think that using the iframes and abusing that made it a lot more playable for you. Uh, yeah, that that's definitely nice. The thing that bothered me the most, I think, is sort of the platform collision detection, because the platforms looked a lot wider than they actually were. Yeah, uh, that I will, yeah. I did notice that. You basically had to be bumping into them to actually land on top of them. That, and there were many jumps that you had to surprisingly be very precise where you stood and moved. <laughs> Those balloons on level three. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, really? Oh, those were awful. You had to be exact or you fell through them. Well, yeah, it's it's a little bit unforgivable. But again, this game came out for free for people who bought enough candy. I mean, for a free game, this is definitely well done. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, price to enjoyment, definitely. Uh, because you're both getting candy and a video game that's playable. So that's not too bad. <laughs> Anyways, that, that's my opinion. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Escorian. Uh, you are going to be moving on to round three. You needed this victory. You got it. Congratulations, the others. I'm sorry that you're out. I'm glad that you had a game that was kind of enjoyable. What? <laughs> yeah. Es Escorian, what, what's going on over in your world these days? What are you doing? Anything that you're streaming or any games um, that you're enjoying? I'm going through Final Fantasy VII Remake. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. It's so good. I really and, enjoy uh, it. I've also been playing Dead by Daylight as well. A <laughs> <laughs> little more violent game. Ah, <laughs> uh, we got a little fan art of of the of the guy. That's adorable, pretty pink pansy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake. You're streaming that right now while you're playing through it? Oh, yeah. I've uh, reached chapter 14, I want to say. Dead by Daylight is sort of the campy horror, like, yeah, Saw-esque game, uh, right? Four people versus one killer, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, that that's the other game. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking of that one where they got stuck up on a mountain and you had to make choices who would live, who would die. Uh, that's a different one. I can't remember what that one is. Dead by Daylight's... Uh... A mature rated game. Oh, <laughs> violent. Un until dawn. There we go. Well, that one's also violent. I think someone gets sawed in half. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like people possibly getting sawed in half or being violenced, uh, head on over to Escorian, who's also doing Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, all of the streamers, by the way, use the names that we put up on the layout, so feel free to go cheat. You know, look at those channels and give them love. Escorian, thank you so much. Jeff, thank you for choosing this game. Both of you, take care. You're welcome. See you later. Till next time. Thanks for having me. Sure thing. <laughs>